but it certainly is the case that the animals that are raised, commercially raised for, for our food, uh, cattle, sheep, hogs, those animals, chickens, certainly are above the line wherever uh, any reasonable person would drive. What you do about m mollusk and, and oysters and so on, I don't know. But yeah. I give them the benefit of the doubt because I have, I have no reason to eat them. We used to be certainly meat eaters. Our bodies are equipped to be omnivorous, to eat grains and all the rest of it, or to eat meat. That's correct. Okay. Um, if that is so, I mean, doesn't it point in the direction of nature saying, yes, it is perfectly okay in the scheme of things for just as a, a lion will kill what the lion wants to eat or provide for the pride of lions, so too humans, uh, because of their physiological makeup, are, are equipped to eat this stuff, so therefore it must be okay. Well, what, it, what, our, what our nature, what our biology tells us, I think, is that we, we can uh, eat a, a diet that includes meat. We can certainly handle that. Yeah. Um, what our, our biology doesn't tell us is the ethical question, what ought we to do? How ought we to live? We can never, we can never infer that we ought to live a certain way because we can live a certain way. All that gives us is the question of the choice. In the case of the lion, for example, and the, and the wildebeest, the lion and the zebra. Yeah. It's not like the lion has a choice of saying, well, I think I'll go after this wildebeest today, or I'll go have a, some tofu or go to the salad bar. I mean, this is not a real option for, for a, a carnivore like this. Our great, our great glory and our great burden as human beings is we do have the choice. And the question is, what factors should we bring to bear on making that choice? In terms of personal health, everybody knows. I mean, it's not a question anymore that a high-fat, high-cholesterol, meat-based diet is not good for us. We all know that. It's, yeah, it's but a little of what you fancy yeah, does but you good. But that doesn't answer the question, well, should we e not eat meat at all? That's where the ethical question comes in, I think. And so all I'm saying here is that the, the mere fact that we can eat meat doesn't mean that we should eat meat. Okay, so you, you draw the line, I mean, would you eat um, lobster? I would not, no. And as I say, my, my basis is uh, where do you have sufficiently good reason to think that this animal is not only in the world but aware of the world? And I think that is a, a difficult question. Mm. If you take the, the uh, wildebeest you talked about or a gazelle and you look at all these nature programs on the National Geographic mm. Channel as all of us do from time to time mm. and the lion chases the gazelle and the gazelle runs away and escapes. Mm -hmm. it, it never ceases to, be ama to amaze me how quickly the gazelle settles down and starts eating the grass again. Now, if that happened to me, <laughs> I wouldn't hang around where the lion's hanging around. I'd be gone. So it seems to tell us something about, you know, what you're talking about, you're, you know, the, the gazelle can feel fear. It doesn't have the same effect on the gazelle as it would have on us. I mean, if you were chased by a lion, you wouldn't want to repeat the experience, and yet the gazelle puts him or herself in the way of a repeat experience, and probably in the next few minutes. Well, so it tells us something about the limits of their intelligence and how much is instinctive behavior mm -hmm. and how much is actually contemplated. I mean, they don't say, will I run or will I not? They just run. I mean, it's absolutely reflex. I think if we talk to people who study animal behavior, and, and I don't do it, I'm a philosopher, and oh. of course your, your line of work is not to study animal behavior, but if we actually go and talk to the Jane Goodalls and the Diane Fosses and other people who go, ethologists who go and study animal behavior, I mean, they are would... Are they studying primates, though, more than... Yeah, but I mean, others who, d who, who study others. I mean, there are, there, mm. are, there are lots of people studying animal behavior of lots of, di of, lots of different animals. I think that they would say, in a, in a case like the one you're imagining, or describing, um, is that a lot of this is, is, is not real behavior. In other words, a lot of it is the lion's really not serious. This is just a, an exercise of, 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 of dominance, an exercise of... Whatever. So, the, and and the and the other animals sometimes I think recognize that, but the important thing I think for us though is not not to lose track of where we are in the world. We're not on the Serengeti plain. We're not in the predator pr predator prey relationship. Our situation is that we are raising literally billions of animals to be slaughtered, uh, not on some plane but in some factory farms. And what we've seen recently uh, in in here in Great Britain, uh, of course, uh, or over there in Great Britain. Uh, is, is the tragedy uh, of, of the cost of this kind of farming. And people are beginning to realize, it's so interesting to me, the, 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 the great public support for this woman in Scotland who has these five sheep 
in her living room. That's right, in her living room, trying to protect these five sheep of her pets and, and the great mass of sentiment in her defense uh, because of the relationship that she has to those animals as her pets or her companion animals. Yeah. It, turns out that she, it turns out that she hardly knows them. She bought them from an Irishman who was going back to live in, in Northern Ireland. And I mean, she just wanted to give them a, a happy home so they could live out their lives in peace and, and die a natural death. But she doesn't know them that well. Well, I'm not sure how well she knows them. But what mm. I do know is that the pub, the, with the pub, when the public speaks about this issue, they say, uh, with a pretty strong majority, uh, that these animals should be saved and protected and so on. But, but at the same time, the animals that are raised for lamb chops and, and, and a lamb roast, leg of a lamb, are in a different category. And it does point out, doesn't it, that, that we have a kind of moral schizophrenia, all, all of us, uh, in, in the sense that the animals that are yeah. our friends and companions are in one category. Okay, once you put a name on Daisy the cow, Daisy is not to be slaughtered. But we have someone, uh, Eugene uh, Kierens, who is a, a butcher. Eugene, um, what do you make of this uh, kind of philosophy? Well, I, I'm, I'm very interested in and you're, you're very welcome to Ireland. And uh, you, you, you certainly are not what I thought you were going to be, namely a fundamentalist. <laughs> and uh, at least you say the word choice many times, your choice of thinking. You're not trying to impose anything. But really, uh, you know, we're, we're products of millions of years of evolution. Millions and millions of years of evolution. And I think that uh, in an affluent society, people tend to think that the cow has uh, cartons of milk rather than coming be milked itself. And if you put, uh, put uh, a lady into behind a trolley in a supermarket where she can push the trolley along on the wheels, pour away nice and quietly and the music plays, and she shops for her family by taking things off the shelf. There's not many generations before that things were vastly different. Right. And I'm talking with the blink of an eye in relation to the millions of years. And it is really a fanciful idea, dare I say fancy, in the kindest possible way, that uh, it is a bit much to ask people to go with your philosophy, and dare I say, as, as, as a butcher for 40 years, the respect that I would hold for the animal that gives me my living and feeds Ireland and has fed Ireland for years and sent us 30, 40 million of us now all claim to be Irish in, in, uh, all, right. all over okay, the world. Okay, I think we get your point. You're saying that if you take the, the passage of time, the history, the change that is being wrought here is literally the blink of an eye. And what you're trying to do is to turn us into something we're not in a historical time span that is really far too fast. Well, I, 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 first, I, I, I want to thank you for your comments and, and, and say that whenever I have a disagreement with, with a butcher or, or, or any other person who's involved with, in the, uh, directly with animals, it's never a question of my attack in the person, but trying to address the issues the, themselves. And so what, what I think is that um, as a philosopher, what matters uh, to me is where the strengths of the arguments are. And uh, when I've thought about it, I mean, it seems to me the strengths of the arguments are in favor of the, of the view that I'm trying to expound. Now, to get society, in terms of a mass movement, to agree with that idea, obviously is going to take a long time. It's not something that is going to happen in the blink of an eye. But, but uh, of course, what we know is, as a matter of historical fact, the people who have wanted to change society in fundamental ways have always uh, uh, faced the same kinds of challenges. In my country, and I don't mean to associate the two ideas mm. completely at all, but in my country, there was a protracted effort to end slavery, as you know. And the people who first started to end slavery had all the odds against them. And people said to them, what you're asking for is impossible. Mm. And so you actually make that comparison that it is the way we treat animals today is the way we treated blacks in the past, the way not too many generations ago we treated women. In some respects, but not in all respects, because we're not denying animals the right to an education, the right to that sort of thing. But, yeah. but in terms of, of the habits of the culture, in terms of the, the sensibility that's brought to bear on uh, a, a position of power, yeah, because we had the power over the women. We had men have power over women.